Hi, can people hear me on Zoom? Hello, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, thanks. Um, okay. Shall we? All right. So, uh, well, welcome back. So, uh, so after this, oh, I feel like I can hear myself as well. No, maybe here. Yeah, uh, no, no, I'm dreaming. Um, anyway, so after this very, very long first part about character variety, let's go to the second part of the lecture, which is about this Poisson structure that uh, I told you uh, exist on these character varieties. And, and so as you notice, the plan was to sort of sh constantly shift between those two point of view, like the scan theoretical point of view on the combinatorial one. And so I was planning to do the same here, but maybe I should start with the scan theoretic one, and then the combinatorial one. Maybe, maybe that makes more sense. Anyway, so uh, because according to uh, Claudia's survey, maybe not, not everybody knows that, but so let me just remind you the definition. So recall that the Poisson structure on, on a commutative algebra A is a uh, a bilinear map from A tensor A to A. So we usually use this curly bracket. So it's called Poisson bracket, um, which satisfies the following property. First of all, then A with this bracket is a Lie algebra. So it means that this is anti-symmetric and it satisfies a, a Jacobi identity. And then uh, it, you don't, can you see here? Okay, let me, let me switch here. And then the second property is that the, this bracket is a derivation in each variable. And because it's anti-symmetric, I only need to do this on Y side, one side. So it means that it satisfies this uh, sort of Leibniz rule. Okay, so this is this is a definition, and let me emphasize the fact that because of this property, if you want to compute or define a Poisson structure, you only do it need to do it like on the generators of A as an algebra. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. This is a bullet point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, so this is a definition. Probably many of you know that this is something that sort of shows up in, in, in physics quite naturally. And um, the CRM, which is originally due to uh, Atia Bot and um, Goldman. And in, at least in Atia Bot's paper, it's really related to, to physics. So I have this paper uh, called Young Mill Equation on. on Surfaces, so both paper are uh, in the list, the, the famous list. And well, of course, the theorem is that this thing has a canonical Poisson structure. By which I mean that the algebra of functions of this is a Poisson algebra. That, that's what I mean by uh, a variety having a Poisson structure. And what I mean by canonical is that it, both of these definitions, they really just depend on the surface abstractly. Uh, so in particular, it's like invariant by different morphisms on, 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 on stuff like that. Say again? Depends. It can be zero, yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the exercises actually. 
I'm, I'm trying to find some, some ID for exercises uh, later. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, I'm, I mean that it's, it's, it has an intrinsic definition in terms of surface, like it doesn't depend on any choices. So in particular, it's like it's totally invariant if you want. And uh, a remark on that will be another exercise is that uh, this structure actually really depends on uh, on S, by which I mean that if, if you take, for example, a puncture torus on a pair of pounds, they have the same fundamental group. So as they have the same character variety, but they will have non-isomorphic Poisson structure. Okay, so this, this really like C is a surface and not just the fundamental group somehow. Uh, okay. And uh, maybe I should say, but if you don't know what that means, don't, don't worry too much. Actually, the, the, the Character stack also has a Poisson structure. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, but I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. So this this was kind of the dilemma. Like I, I I wanted these lectures to be elementary, so this is kind of useful to to use this this scan slash topology kind point of view. Uh, but somehow there is this version using this formalism of shifted Poisson structure, which is much more abstract, but in a way more elegant. And, and again, somehow the world point is that when you're working with the character variety, you, when you take the quotients, you know, things don't glue together as well. So what you have to do is somehow to lift things to the representation variety, do stuff there and then take the quotients again. But if you're working with a character stack, you know, where the whole idea is that you can work with the quotient directly. So you don't have to make this, this choices. So I, I should say that the, so the character stack, uh, which you can think of, if, if, if you're familiar with that, uh, read that, otherwise just close your eyes. So this is like the, the one way of defining this is that, as a mapping stack from S to the classifying stack BG. And then there is a theorem by, uh, uh, C P T V V. So it's Kak Pantento and Vaki and Vesosi, and those guys did not make it to the list. Because if you don't, or either you already know about this paper or you don't. And if you don't, that's probably not a good place to start. But but this thing has a uh, has a sort of stacky Poisson structure. The other reason I don't want really I don't really want to like talk too much about that is that I we had this conversation with, with many of the participants. I don't really know what it means in this abelian world to have like a quantization of a Poisson stack. So um, yeah, and since I want to quantize things, I don't want to not be able to do that. Um, but one paper that did make it to the list is uh, of course a paper by Pavel Safranov, where he precisely explained how you construct this, this he, he really does this in the case of, of, of character variety. And basically, you reformulate everything I'm going to talk to you about in this language. And again, the main point is that you can work with the, the character stack with a caution directly. And like this, this the, the point is that the Poisson structure is automatically compatible with gluing of surfaces uh, without making any choice. So in this stack, you all things are much, much more canonical somehow. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. So uh, that was the uh, say this. So, so let me uh, switch a uh, little bit things and let me start with uh, this thing called the Goldman bracket. Uh, uh, so There is a serum by Goldman. It's actually slightly stronger than that, saying that the the space of uh, formal linear combinations of loops 
on S has a canonical algebra structure. where the bracket of two loops is given as follow. I probably have to take this. So if I take on here, I really take like loops, not, not union of loops. And the, the formula that you take the, uh, I guess I need to assume that alpha and beta uh, like uh, transverse, like on, I have only transverse inter intersection or something like that. Like you want, you want them to be in sufficiently uh, generic position somehow. And you take a sum of uh, all intersection, intersections point between those loops. And then you do this. So epsilon p of alpha beta alpha. Okay, and I will explain what this means. Where uh, this thing means take p as a base point. So now you can think of alpha and beta, there were free loops, but now you can think of them as being like actual like base loop base at P. So it makes sense to compose them. Look, so compose at P and then forget the base point. So when you compose them, you get a loop base at P and then you can just forget that it's based on, on, on think of it as a free loop and epsilon P of alpha and beta is just a sign which depends on how they are oriented where they intersect. So if beta is here and alpha is here, this is one. And if it's the other way around, this is minus one. So in particular, it's actually, uh, you actually have a Lie algebra structure on the like Z linear combination is with integral coefficient, which maybe is interesting. And so because I have a Lie bracket on this and uh, this Goldman algebra is actually the free commutative algebra, then I have a bracket defined on the generators. So it extends by derivation. So using this Leibniz rule, uh, to a Poisson bracket. And uh, the whole Goldman algebra. So it's just, it just a fact of life that if you have a Lie algebra and you take the, the free polynomial algebra, or if you want the symmetric algebra on that, then this becomes a Poisson algebra. Uh, this is called the killer of custom theory of brackets usually. And so in particular, we get a Poisson structure on this algebra of loop. And the other claim is that the, uh, well, I don't know what the best way to say that. And this map is actually Poisson. It's a map of Poisson algebra. I guess yes, there are like two, two versions of that. If you want to take this as a definition, so if you don't already know that there is a Poisson structure, you can say something like the kernel of this map is a Poisson ideal. So the quotient is a Poisson algebra. And it gives you a definition of this, of this Poisson structure. Mm -hmm. So in particular, it's all nice and good. It gives a, a topological definition of this, this Poisson algebra. And now I want to, this was very short. I want to switch to the uh, combinatorial uh, point of view. So this is again really the sort of motto of this lecture is that the, the scan theoretic point of view is very nice on the elementary and, and the, the nice thing is that you don't 
it, it just works for like any surface, which is punctual or closed, and, and it doesn't depend on any particular presentation of it, but it might be tricky to compute. And then there's this combinatorial version, which depends on a bunch of choice, but well, which is combinatorial. So it's, it's actually easier. And um, well, the thing is that there is a lot of slightly different formalism that you can use to do that. So the one that somehow is most relevant for this lecture is for broadly. But there are actually a lot of other versions like uh, AKS, AMM, uh, I guess LDS, and so on. And then there are lecture notes by uh, Michel Audin, which explain that a little bit better than the, the original paper. And even in all this formalism, there are like slightly different choice of the sort of combinator objects that you want to consider. And because I will not be giving any explicit formula, basically everything, oops, well, oh, sorry. Everything I'm going to say somehow apply to all this formalism at once. The, the formulas are just different, but, but the idea is always the same, okay? Um, so first of all, the, the, the first fact is that there are actually several Poisson structure on G itself. And the first one I want to consider is the so-called greenfeld Kialin bracket. There is a Poisson structure on G that turns it uh, into something called a Poisson algebraic group. And uh, so this, this notion is actually due to uh, Dreenfeld. And most of the things that will not be attributed to Dreenfeld are due to Dreenfeld anyway, as you know pretty much every single piece of mathematics I know. Um, and what I mean by Poisson algebraic group is that it has a Poisson structure and uh, the multiplication map from G cross G to G is a Poisson map. So it's compatible with the multiplication. So when I say that really what I mean is that the induced map from O of G to O of G tensor O of G, which is just the co-product of O of G, this is a map of Poisson algebra. So every, every time I say that there is a map of Poisson variety, I mean, there is a, a map the other way around between the Poisson algebra. Yeah. Yeah, every, every time I say this variety has a Poisson structure, I mean, it's algebra function is a Poisson algebra. This is kind of the, if we are doing differential geometry, that would be another way of saying that, probably in algebraic geometry as well, but yeah, I'm only thinking about Poisson structure on algebras, but I'm always thinking about varieties. So again, every time I say that I have a Poisson map, it means that I have a Poisson, a map of Poisson algebra in the other direction between the algebras of functions. So the multiplication is a Poisson map, and I, I won't write it because that's not as important, but the inversion is an anti-Poisson map. That, that's the definition. And, uh, oh, bye bye. Um, I realized I actually forgot to say something, so let me add it here. Like the original definition by Atian but and in a way, Goldman's definition too, but somehow in a slightly hidden way, it actually depends, I should say, depends only on uh, the fact that there is a natural pairing on GLN, little GLN, which just map A, B to the trace of A, B. So basically this, this kind of Poisson structure, you can define it every time you have 
an algebraic group whose Lie algebra has an invariant symmetric pairing, which is the case for simple Lie algebras on, on reductive Lie algebras like JLN. And in particular, there is an associated canonical element. Which is just the, the sum of the EIJ onto AJI. Maybe I need a one half or something. Um, no, that's okay. okay. And, and, and basically, the construction depends on that. I'm so critical in this Goldman bracket construction, you're also basically taking trace. In fact, this, this also depends on that. So really, you don't need extra data to do that. But when you're working on this uh, uh, sort of Poisson algebraic side, the, the construction, like the formula for this, for this Poisson structure, involves something uh, called a classical air matrix. Which again, let me get this right. Sorry, I need a two here. And basically, this is some sort of like polarization of this canonical element in the sense that R plus R12, uh, 2 1, sorry, by which I mean that just flip the tensor factor here. So I take the symmetric part of this, and this is T. So, so the, the, the cost, like for crossly construction somehow depends on this sort of factorization of the canonical element associated with, uh, with the pairing given by the trace. So I will not give the formula involving uh, like how, how this is defined, but it depends on this element. Say again. Yeah, two one just means that I flip the tons of factors. And uh, so uh, did I switch ball? No, I didn't. So whatever the exact formula is, you can define a bracket involving air on the fact that the, the, the bracket that you get is Poisson because uh, air satisfy something called a classical young Baxter equation. So maybe you have heard about the quantum young Baxter equation, which is basically the braid relation and somehow this is like a quasi classical limit of that and that in a way that sort of explain why this Poisson structure has to do with braiding. Uh, I don't want to say too much more about that. Let me just write it. Okay. So again, what I mean by, by this indices is that Everything takes place in in uh, sorry uh, uh, yeah JLN to the power of three, and when I say r one three, it means that I put the component of r in the first and third component, and I put a one in the middle. The the last term should be different, no? No, that that that's a two. Yeah, I don't know if that's clear about that. Yes, that was a two. So, so last term. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, that's okay. you're right. That's one three. So thanks. Okay. 
ये सही Okay, so I'm going to skip all of that. Anyway. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to make a point that, 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 that there is this thing and that the, I'm basically waving my hand on saying that this Poisson structure is somehow the quasi-classical limit of the quantum group associated with G that we will talk about later. So that's, that's the reason why I wanted to mention that. And then there is a notion of Poisson action which is also due to uh, Dreinfeld and semenov chanchansky who says it's due to Dreinfeld. So if X is um, a Poisson variety, we say that the, uh, and if G act on X, we say that the action if, is Poisson, If the action map, uh, let me take a right action so that it gives the left action on function, is Poisson. So it's, a, it's slightly counterintuitive, so I want to emphasize this. Like if you have a Poisson manifold and the group act on it, like the sort of natural thing you might ask is that it just preserves the Poisson structure, that, that it acts by Poisson automorphism. This is not what's happening here because G itself has a Poisson structure and we want the action to be a map of Poisson variety. So it does not preserve the Poisson structure, but somehow it's like the correct version of, of Poisson action for Poisson groups. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. No, I want to sort of, go back to something I said yesterday because I feel like I wasn't very precise. So not like, uh, again, S be a surface, but this time assume that it, it doesn't have to be connected. And let X1, XK be a set of base points. with at least one of them, with at least one base point on each component. Okay. And then what I mean by an n-dimensional representation of uh, it's fundamental group read. Yeah. It's, well, you probably know that it's just a functor from this to the category of n dimensional vector space. So, more concretely, it's just a copy vi of v for every base point. And then for every path gamma from, I don't know, xi to xj, you get uh, a linear map rho of gamma from the i to the j, and it should be compatible with composition the obvious way. So I think this, this answer a question that someone was asking yesterday. And I guess I actually uh, need that. Sorry, can you go back? Mm -hmm. I didn't write all that down. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Just tell me when. <laughs> That's fine, thank you. Yep. Okay, and so there is uh, a natural action of some product of copies of G. Let me. So, and uh, 
there is an action of G to the power of K on the space of representation of this fundamental group of it, where basically you just, uh, if, uh, let me try to, get, again, if gamma is uh, passed from Xi to Xj, then uh, you have like, like, if you have G1, GK in GK, this acts on, let's say rho of gamma by, uh, let's say, let's try to get this right, GI inverse rho of gamma GK, uh, sorry, GJ, yeah, like that, okay. So again, if there is only one base point, this is just the action by conjugation. It, it goes back to the usual definition of a representation on equivalence of representations. And then I, I gave this slightly confusing definition. So let me try that again. A skeleton on S is a graph curly V, curly E on S such that this is included in the boundary of S. In particular, I assume that this is non-empty. Sorry, I should have said. From now on, I will only be working with, with punctured surface. Uh, again, each component has at least one point on, on one vertex on, on it. And such that S, uh, sorry, it's an oriented graph. S deformation retracts on S. So yesterday I kind of like mixed two definition. The thing that if you, if you have a skeleton on a surface, then you get an ordering of every half edge for every vertex. But it's not, it's not supposed to be part of the definition. What is true is that if you forget the surface, but remember this ordering, you can reconstruct the surface from the graph on the ordering. And, and uh, so just as we did before for the non groupoid version, uh, a skeleton gives uh, an identification the character variety of S, but now it works for even non-connected surfaces with G to the power of the number of edges modulo G to the power of the number of vertices. Mm -hmm. So for example, basically it's a skeleton is like a set of generators for the fundamental group wheel. So a set of like elementary paths so that every other pass is sort of a free composition of, of those. Uh, okay. So uh, the main theorem, so again, I should you know, cite all those people because they all have a version of that, is that uh, the choice of the skeleton actually induces a Poisson structure on the representation variety itself. With respect to uh, the set of vertices, which has a variety is just again, G, a bunch of power of G. So the, the claim is that every time you choose a skeleton, you actually have a Poisson structure, not just on the character variety, but like upstairs on the representation variety itself. In such a way that, say again. Uh, in the sense that there is a combinatorial formula, like if, if I using another Poisson structure on G, I, I, I don't want to give explicit formulas, but basically there is the point that if, if, if you give me a skeleton 
uh, and if I think hard enough, I can construct a Poisson structure on, on this space. And the claim is not finished such that, uh, so I get a Poisson structure on that such that the action of switchboards. Sorry. <laughs> that the action of D to the K, uh, sorry. Is Poisson. So you get, you get a Poisson action. So, that, so that's where the Poisson structure on G shows up. And then this, this is a general feature of Poisson action. I should have said that before, that the quotient of, if, if, if you have a Poisson action on G on some varieties and the quotient is Poisson. So that's kind of the main point. So in particular, um, on such that the like cushion Poisson structure and this character variety coincide with the uh, ABG one. So basically there is a non-canonical Poisson structure on the representation variety itself that does depend on, on, on this skeleton. And it also depends on the choice of this classical air matrix, which it, it, the Atiyah about Goldman structure does not. But then the action is Poisson. And when you take the quotient, it just kills all the choices. And you get this Atiyah about Goldman Poisson structure on, on the character variety. So that that's the theorem. And, and if you want to have like explicit formula, just just look at one of these papers. I like as I said, the folk Rosley construction is the one that is relevant for the quantum group side. But there is a version by Alexeyev, Kosman, Schwarzbach, Malkin, Meinerken that involves something called quasi quasi Poisson structure. Now it seems that it's more complicated, but it's actually much simpler. And I prefer this version much better, to be honest. But uh, I won't I won't be mentioning that. Anyway. So basically, the, again, the, this was a fairly long theorem, but the upshot is that if you give me a skeleton, then I, I have a combinatorial construction of this Poisson structure. That, that's basically the, the short and on, on, on long of it. And, uh, okay. And now the, okay, so first of all, of course, this gives you a combinatorial construction of this Poisson structure, which is already nice. But then there is something more is that if, if X is a G cross G Poisson a variety, by which I mean it's a Poisson variety with a G cross G action, which is Poisson, then there is an induced, uh, uh, this can be turned into a G Poisson uh, variety where G acts, uh, acts diagonally. And you're probably like, well, you know, what, what's the big deal? Of course I can, you know, just take the diagonal copy of G and act on it with weight. The problem is that if you just do that, the action will not be Poisson because this map, this map is not Poisson. Like the multiplication of G is a map of Poisson manifold, but not the inclusion, the, the diagonal inclusion. So in fact, if you have a G cross G Poisson variety, you can turn it into a G Poisson variety, but you have to, there is one particular way you have to change the Poisson structure for this to work. No, the action is the diagonal one, but if you just act diagonally, then the action will not be a Poisson action in the sense that I defined before, like the, the map from G cross. So you modify the Poisson structure of X here. So, so this, this, the Poisson structure here and the Poisson structure here are actually different, which, which in fact is, is a feature or not a bug. It's, and why do we want that?
did I write it? Uh, sorry, let me just go back here for a second. And this 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 is called the fusion of X. Uh, maybe I should write it like I don't know first. And the reason why this is interesting is that if you so if you have a some piece of a surface with some Mach point on maybe some you know edges like this, well you can glue those vertices together and get something like that. Uh, with one point on, on this edge is going there. So you you just glue those vertices to, vertices together and then you get only one vertex. So you might have like other vertices, but in particular, you have an action on, of G cross G because of these vertices and this action is Poisson. And the claim is that in terms of Poisson structure, this is fusion. So the Long story short, when you have a skeleton on a surface and you just glue vertices together and you glue the surface as well, maybe that's not clear, I should put colors like the, the, the surface actually changed. So this is, those are edges and this is a boundary. So this is a piece of the boundary and this is the new boundary. Uh, no, sorry, I got it the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, they might be on the same surface and might be on two different. That's why I don't I don't uh, ask them to be connected anymore. So there might be like two different connected. Like I'm looking at the one surface that might be disconnected. So they might be on different components. They might be on the same components. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe my my picture is not very is not great. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think you know you you you're right. I probably I'm, I probably also need something here. Like, yeah, yeah. But but that's my. Point. I'm, I'm gluing the interval here with interval here, so I still have a piece of boundary up on here, and, the, and then I choose to put the, the vertex somewhere. No, I, let, let me try again. Uh, maybe I should just, yeah, maybe I should do something. Yeah. Yeah, but it will, I will I will move it to the boundary. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'm, I'm I might be cheating a little bit. I'm not sure how you decide which side it should go. Uh, yeah, I think you need. Yeah, sorry, you need to choose a, a vertex. On you're right, the thing that in the quasi Poisson world, it doesn't matter, but in the Poisson world, you, you need to choose like a side. So let me try again, again. So what I, so I have a vertex here and a vertex here. And I actually choose in addition to that, like uh, an interval on one side or the other. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I need I need the glued vertex to be somewhere on the boundary, but I prefer I could put it here on here or here. Sorry. So uh, to take care of this choice, I guess I have to choose like one side of the vertex, and 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 the somehow the glued vertex was would be on the other side. Uh, uh. So on the maybe I should give an example because I'm I'm confusing myself. Any say again? Yeah. Maybe not. I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think so actually. Uh, 
yeah no no yeah definitely you, you yeah you need to choose an int in indeed the choice in you need to choose an interval on the vertex should be like one of the end of the interval somehow and depending on which end you will have the point like up or upstairs or downstairs somehow uh, yeah anyway so the the idea is that this um, so you have this non-canonical Poisson structure on the representation variety that depends on the skeleton, but then gluing vertices of the skeleton and then gluing the surface along that correspond to this fusion operation. And, and in particular, the claim is that the, if you look at a disk, somehow it's very close to what I, was, I wanted to say with this category of shifting, but no, I need the skeleton, which is somehow the the downside of this point of view. But if I take a disk with two vertices on, on look like that, then the representation variety is actually this uh, G with this Poisson algebraic structure. So I didn't want to say then, but uh, Natalie, you were right that somehow this is still the, the basic building block, like the Poisson structure we define on, on, on G. And then basically any surface can be obtained by gluing pieces like that. Okay, so for example, you can just take that and, and glue those two things together and you will get an annulus with a point here. So this will, this will again be G, but this guy is a G cross G Poisson manifold. And really this thing is a fusion of G, which is a G plus one manifold. And so it has a different Poisson structure. Uh, and the Poisson structure you get here is called the STS bracket. So STS is for Semen of Chomsky, and if you don't know it, that's just one person. Uh, yeah, and the link in, in, in the list. Anyway. So the, the basic idea is that you have like a straight up combinatorial horrible formula, but you can also just compute it by sort of successively gluing simple pieces uh, like this, basically. That's the general idea. Okay. So far, so good. Say again. Yeah, no, but so he's asking why it's again G. The thing is that in both cases, I'm talking about the representation variety. So the character variety of the disk is actually equivalent. Say again. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm not sure I was finding anything, but yeah. yeah. So the, to say something that sounds stupid, the character variety of the disk is the quotient of G by G cross G, which as a variety is trivial, as a stack it's interesting, but um, anyway. the character variety of the analysis is the quotient of G by G. So of course the character varieties are different, but the, in that case, the representation variety are the same like the representation variety of the disk with respect to two base points is G and the representation variety of the analyst with respect to one base point is also G, but with a different structure. And it goes from one to the other by this fusion procedure. Okay. And again, basically like this, this sort of folk Rosley version of fusion, I don't think it's actually written anywhere. And uh, it depends on a lot of stuff. There is a lot of annoying sign on whatever. The quasi Poisson is sort of easier on their equivalents, but uh, anyway. So choose, choose your pick. Anyway. So finally, last but not least, how do we go from that to uh, close to your faces? Okay. 
So uh, now basically, if S now is a closed surface, and as usual, I take S not to be S minus a disk, okay. and I choose uh, uh, a base point on the boundary. Uh, on the boundary on this, okay. Then I have a map from, uh, I have an inclusion, sorry, from the annulus with this particular, the, the one I was considering before. Uh, maybe I should, sorry, I got this upside down. Let's choose the other one, sorry. Oh, anyway. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you can you know flip, flip things. So we have an inclusion of, of this guy to this guy, which which uh, preserves the skeleton. Okay, because here I've chosen a base point of the boundary, like a unique base point, and you know because I need to have the monodromy around the boundary, necessarily I have one edge around the boundary. So there is an embedding that that maps the skeleton to the skeleton. And I told you before that you know the uh, representation variety was functorial with respect to embedding, and if it furthermore preserves the skeleton, I claim it's, it's Poisson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, what I mean is that whatever the way I choose the skeleton here, I, I sort of have to, I have to have this one. Like, and, 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 no, wait, you're right. I'm saying something completely wrong. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, forget about that. Uh, Mm. No, right. I think for any, no, for any choice of, of skeleton, actually. You're right, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm talking nonsense. The, the map induced by the inclusion of this, so you get the map from the representation variety to Celebration variety of this. Uh, this map is possible. And it's G equivalent. We already knew that. Plus some more condition that I don't want to write down. And altogether, this is something called a moment map. I should say a group valued moment map. Uh, so this is like a groupy version of, of the visual notion of moment map in Poisson geometry. And again, never mind the details, the, the whole point is that this implies that the character variety of S, which is mu inverse of the identity modulo G, is Poisson. This is, this is the thing that you want the moment map to to satisfy, and this, of course, gives the this work of the, the sort of the closed version of this Atia Bot Goldman Poisson structure. So, yeah, this is again the same idea that I was explaining at the very beginning. If you want to do computation for closed surface, you just like pierce a hole in it, do your computation, and then apply this construction. And it turns out that it's compatible with the Poisson structure, so you get uh, you get a construction of of the Poisson structure for closed surfaces as well. Uh, okay. I, how am I with time? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm, let me just check that I didn't say anything else. But I think I'm okay. Yeah, no, I think I'm I'm good. 
maybe just to to say the name not that that it's really important but the uh somehow one of the main characters like you know if you want to understand surfaces in general usually you need to understand the annulus on the, on the puncture torus and then the rest sort of follow and i yeah, I'm not sure I, I want to say that. I wanted to point out that somehow this construction goes both ways. Like you, you can use this formalism of Poisson Lee geometry to construct this idea about Goldman Poisson structure, but you can also go the other way. And there are a lot of interesting things in Poisson geometry, in Poisson Lee geometry, that you can sort of realize as representation variety of something. And uh, a, a particularly important example is that if you took the Sorry, I should probably draw the surface before. If you if you take a puncture torus, with this uh, with this color, so we get a certain puzzle structure on. G cross G, which is called a Heisenberg double. And it turns out that this Poisson structure is actually important regardless of its relationship with, with uh, character variety. And basically this is, let me put, called like a Poisson algebraic, like Poisson group version of the cotton John bundle. And in fact, it's, it's actually formally isomorphic to the cotangent bundle of G. Like, like this, this Poisson structure is symplectic on some big down subset. And if you take like a formal neighborhood of the identity, this is actually isomorphic to the, the cotangent bundle, but it has an interesting global structure. And it turns out that this Poisson structure plays an important role in, I don't know, like conformal field series on, you know, the WZW model, if, if they're like physicists uh, among you. So that this, this structure actually shows up in, in many places that have no obvious relation with character varieties. Although of course there is probably a relation somewhere. Um, and basically those two things are like the, you can build everything from the disk, but you can also build everything from those pieces and some of that's easier. Like when, once you have that, you can just construct any, any surface from, from, from those two. And I think I'll stop here. Hmm. Any question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Not not canonical, but distinguished. Like like there is yeah. I could, I mean, I could, you know, take like five vertices on, on stuff between them, but, but why, why would I do that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It, it was asking whether, so I'm sure it was asking whether there was other choices than the skeleton and S not. And in a way, there is a choice of the connect of the skeleton and the annulus. It's not a canonical choice, but it's like the obvious one, basically. But yeah. Uh, I think maybe. There should be a version where it shows several vertices on the annulus, and then you get a moment map with value in bioscopies of G. I'm not entirely sure, but some, it might be convenient for whatever reason. Like if you have here, I should say that I choose a skeleton with one vertex. If I choose a skeleton with several vertex, I think I can have like also a moment map with several copies of G, and, and that might be convenient for whatever reason uh, at whatever time. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, this will be one of the exercises. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm, no, I mean no, no, no spoiler. But that's I, actually it's already true for GL one. 
in a way. So you don't have to go very far to see that. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you try to, to compute that or not. Yeah. Like no spoiler, basic one, one of them is zero, the other is not. So it's easy to see they're not isomorphic. Ah, oh, thanks. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Okay. okay, well then, ah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, stop. Um, and